All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We're talking about the Minnesota Vikings in today's video. It's crazy because check the date real quick. One second. It's late October and the Vikings are five and one. And we're saying the Vikings just lost their first football game in the month of October, especially considering this is against a Detroit Lions team that was a game away, they were a quarter away, they were at most a half away from making the Super Bowl one season ago. But obviously, you know, even though it was week seven in Minnesota, it was undefeated at that point in time. Divisional implications, home field advantage, you name it. It's an unfortunate loss. It would have been a huge win. Take a look at the Vikings schedule the next four weeks-ish, and um, it wouldn't be shocking at all if Minnesota's like nine and one heading into week 10 or week 11. If you want to ask me, we talked about this on the show yesterday. If you guys want to listen to my football podcast, click the link down below in the description here. I was asking, people were wondering why I thought the Vikings lost the football game. There are a couple of reasons. First off, the Vikings had the football with four minutes and 16 seconds left, and they could not get a first down to ice the clock and win the football game. So they shot themselves in the foot there. But the other reason they shot themselves in the foot, and I know Detroit did the same thing, penalties. You know, the Minnesota Vikings had eight total penalties for 59 yards, and I know this was an extremely even football game. Therefore, folks, the margins extremely slim. Detroit had eight penalties for 49 total yards. Minnesota, eight penalties for 59 yards. If that number was like two, two penalties for 10 yards, there's an argument that Minnesota, you know, easily would have had a much better opportunity. Now, obviously, you know, if I went back and looked at all these penalties and gave you why, then it's all hearsay. So it doesn't matter, but you get the point. Welcome back to the channel. We're obviously talking about the Minnesota Vikings in today's video. But before we do, if you guys enjoy it, stupid zen be sure to hit that like button hit that sub button for daily nfl content we post a ton of vikings videos on this channel as you guys know if we could try and get this one to 200 likes that would mean the world to me also quick shameless plug my vikings channel i will be ramping it up i promise will be pinned in the comment section so the vikings are five and one and i don't know if you guys like we talked about this in the show they've had the fourth hardest schedule or actually it depends on what metric or what website you use everyone it's unanimous. The Minnesota Vikings have had a top five strength of schedule in the National Football League thus far. Your remaining strength of schedule is 28, the fourth easiest slate in the NFL. So once again, take a look in the next four weeks. You got a bunch of games against you know the Jags, the Rams coming up right here on Thursday. Two hours, or sorry, two days from now, like 48 hours from now, Minnesota hopefully is six and one, and we can kind of forget about this Detroit game until. I think, what, week 18, the next time you guys play them. Keep in mind, when we zoom out, the Minnesota Vikings were supposed to win or predicted, projected to win six and a half games by the odds maker. They're still fourth in the league in point differential, but I will say it's not as great as I kind of thought, but there are two big players, Dalton Risner coming back and obviously TJ Hawkinson, and that's going to make a huge deal. We also have the trade deadline, like 10 or so days, not great at math here, 10 or so days away from the time of this recording. I wouldn't be surprised because of how much cap space Minnesota's about to have if they were to make a big time move and give them a big time contract. Sam Darnold did good. He certainly did good. Jared Goff outperformed him. Jared Goff outplayed him but it was a very slim margin and Jared Goff is literally breaking history. They've had more touchdowns than incompletions in like the last three weeks. It truly is a crazy statistic, but you know, I know it wasn't a good loss or it was a good loss, but a loss is a loss or no one's happy about that loss. Sam Darnold, 22 of 27, 259 yards. He also had one touchdown and one interception. He had three big time throws and that one turnover worthy play that pick was a combination of just not seeing it, you know, not being a good football throw, and also just mainly a combination, in my opinion, of Brian Branch being one of the most intriguing, young, talented safeties in the entire National Football League. Like, I'm telling you, man, I make a lot of Lions, Lions videos on this channel. Brian Branch is a star. He's a star. I don't care that he's in a sophomore campaign. He was a stud last year and he's a star this year. But here's my issue with Minnesota. They're shooting themselves in the foot. It's so stupid. They've amassed 29 penalties on offense through six games. Not only is that number fourth in the entire NFL, but it's 14 more than you had through six games in 2022. And it's 10 more than you had in the six games last season. And it makes no freaking sense because you think of offensive line issues or, you know, just like offensive penalties in general. A lot of people put that on the coach. And we know Kevin O'Connell is a good coach. So, like, what's going on there? 
Defensively wasn't great. Gave up 391 total yards of offense. That's their third most allowed this season. They only had one turnover, which is also their fewest in a game this season. But the offensive line is where I'm having issues because I just don't really understand it. I know you got a good offensive line. Sam Darnold finished that game with four sacks. It was his third four-sack game in his last four starts. And here's the issue. Aiden Hutchinson, one of the league's best edge rushers was injured in that game and Detroit I think only pressured you guys like 15 or 18 times or something like that and three of those were coverage sacks so Sam you got to get rid of that football you got to get rid of football or at least that's the way I see that right guard Ed Ingram is allowing more pressures per snap than any of the other 51 guards in the NFL center Garrett Bradbury is allowing more pressures per snap than any of the other 20 side 27 qualified centers in the NFL Heading into week seven, the Vikings offensive line has allowed 50 pressures, including eight sacks on 159 pass plays in 2024. So their pass block efficiency rating is 26th in the NFL. And just to make matters even worse, and we kind of saw this last week uh, when Aaron Jones or two weeks ago when Aaron Jones got banged up in that Jets game. When Aaron Jones is not the dude running the football, Minnesota's dead last in yards per carry. And I, 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 it's so weird because Todd Chandler, if we were to base Todd Chandler off of the last month of last season, it just doesn't make much sense to me. But once again, the good news is TJ Hawkinson hopefully is returning this upcoming week. You're also getting Dalton back. The other good news is the schedule and you've got a home or sorry, a road matchup against Los Angeles in you know two days from now. And typically with these short week Thursday games, the better team, the better quarterback, the better coach usually wins that. So I have full faith that Sam Darnold is going to, and the whole Vikings team is going to come in here with a chip on their shoulder. And I kind of want to see them obliterate that Rams defense, or sorry, their offense, because I saw a couple of interesting statistics. The defensive line, 20th ranked defensive line heading into last week. The Vikings defensive line is 21st in pressure rate, but second to last in pass rush grade. Only two players clocking in above 60 per PFF and Phillips and Grenard. So I just kind of want to see them get their mojo back. I felt really good. And folks, you know, Jake Bates misses that kick. We got a different conversation. Uh, they get a first down. They get a couple of first downs. They ice the clock. We got a different conversation. They don't give up 21 unanswered points in the second quarter. We're having a different conversation. So it's a long season. This was the furthest thing from a dud by all means. And once again, you're going up against like, you know, I, I, Vikings fans have a lot of respect for every team in the NFL. So I'm sure a lot of Vikings fans even agree with this. But like, you know, the Lions are kind of clearly like a top three team in the NFL. And you just barely lost by them. And you kind of shot yourself in the foot for it. So in these types of games, man, the margin for error, it's so small. And to try one. That's all. That's all it is. So thank guys for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that sub button for daily NFL content. But guys, give me your thoughts on that on that team. Give me your thoughts on this. Uh, or sorry, give me your thoughts on that game. Give me your thoughts on this team heading into this upcoming matchup against Los Angeles. Have a great rest of your day. We'll probably see you tomorrow or on game day. So peace.